Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And on this channel, we do a lot of primitive build, how-to, and or hunting videos just like this one. So, if it is your first time visiting my channel, do please consider subscribing. But more importantly, go back and check out a lot of my other building and hunting videos. That'll bring some more context to this video. But today we're going to be kind of doing a walkthrough on some of the whereas's and what for's as to why I hunt primitive and I'm also going to be giving you a lot of tips throughout this video on how to get closer to animals, wait for the right shots, and why that stuff is really important. And we're going to cover all of that stuff in this video coming up, so hang with us. All right, so we're gonna jump right into this hunt. And we were actually deer hunting, and we were trying to cut through a trail in the woods so we wouldn't be seen by a deer that we were trying to stalk that was actually on the other side of this dry lake bed. But being opportunistic primitive hunters, we could hear these pigs in the palmettos, but they were coming straight towards us. So we had very little options except to just freeze, stand still, and let this play out. So watch what happens in this, then we're gonna back it up and we're gonna talk about what happened in this particular situation and how it just kind of happened to work out. All right, let's revisit this now and see what's actually going on here. So, of course, like I said, this is an opportunistic situation. We weren't specifically looking for these pigs, but they were just coming to us. Now, these little ones in front of us are completely weaned off. We actually going to talk about that a little bit later, so hang with us. Uh, but this pig is moving into us, and this is probably a classic case of Darwinism, that she's just not terribly smart. She's not listening to the warnings of her little ones. It's not that she's tame, but if but if you put yourself in this situation enough times, eventually you kind of get in front of animals that aren't necessarily smart. And she walked into about three yards, and I just pretty much pulled the string back a, a fair little distance. I don't have to pull it completely back at this distance because we're so close. So when she stopped, looked at me, I shot her right in the heart at about three steps. And then you can actually see, and we'll back it up here again, that she runs about 20 yards and goes down. And it happens that fast. And a stone point to the heart put her down exceptionally fast. Now, I wanted to go back and touch on the fact that uh, people like to associate human traits with, say, animal traits. And a lot of people that really aren't familiar with hunting that are, that are watching this, and I hope that they are actually watching with an open mind in which they can learn something, is, is this is not a little pig family that's going to grow up together and I killed the mother. Uh, these are completely weaned off, and in fact, they're only really probably days or weeks before she is going to go into heat again and actually run these babies off and they are completely self-sufficient on their own. They'll join up with another group of pigs somewhere else along the line. And uh, in the situation, you can see where she falls down and you notice there's a few extra kicks in her. And I already know that there's people that would say, I hate that you let her suffer on the ground like that, that, that this isn't right, this is cruel, you should go up and shoot it again. But it's really important to understand that when you put an arrow in the heart or the lungs and they go down that fast. This is not Hollywood. Hollywood makes us believe that the second somebody is shot, even like in the heart with uh, a bullet, that they immediately get X's in their eyes and they're dead. And that is honestly not how uh, life and death actually works. So even if we were to shoot this pig in the heart in the same exact place with a rifle, it would have ran probably the same distance and gone down and still kicked that last little bit. That's the nervous system reacting to it. She's already dead. She's expired. That is actual. 
you will notice here later on I try to keep it to a minimum but she is expired but her heart is still pumping trying to pump and so you can actually see the arrow bobbing back and forth and so this hog is completely incapacitated it was a very fast very efficient and ethical death but this is how the body actually reacts in a true death situation but all things told this was extremely fast and extremely ethical across and all of a sudden we see her and all those all those little pigs are weaned off they're not suckling on her anymore so she's fair game and she literally walked right here just like that one. there he goes <laughs> this place is loaded with them right now and this is all completely free range this isn't inside I mean this is 12,000 acres of working cattle ranch there's not a high fence on this place these are just wild pigs running around and that pig was I could have reached out and tapped her on the nose with the end of my bow, and I thought she was going to see us, and I was like, well, I mean, it happens, it's hunting, and I was like, if you're going to turn perfectly broadside, I'm just going to poke you in the heart, <laughs> so that's what I did, and you saw her go down, I mean, she made it 20, 15, 20 yards, so, and that's it, that fast, stone point, and that's one of my, uh, well, kind of like a classic hunter self bow, or classic self bow design. That's it. It was just that fast. All right. We gotta make this quick because we're actually deer hunting, but there's a deer still out walking the edge way down here, so we gotta hurry up and get down here. I'm sure we won't get her, but unbelievably she didn't spook with all this. But this is one of my like classic self bow models, just a straight limbed primitive bow, and they're just as deadly as they come. Of course, I mean this one was like three or four yards away, so but put it right in the pocket took out the heart, she's down like that. So, thanks for hanging with us. We're gonna get out and see if we can't get that other deer here real quick. Okay, so here's a different situation altogether. Now, if you kind of watch right on the other side of those vines and those broken dead palm branches, you can see that there's, it's actually a pretty significantly sized boar. It's pretty big, and we saw this boar from uh, quite a great distance, really a couple hundred yards away across the pasture walking into this mix of palmettos and pasture. So we got really close and this is very readily doable with these animals for the most part. We can get in this close. This is why quite honestly when you hunt these regularly with uh, modern weapons, rifles and compounds, you can kind of come up with them really really fast because you just kind of get yourself in range you can make a shot and it's over that fast but of course when you're hunting with a primitive bow or an atlatl or something like that it obviously gets much more difficult but the important fact is here is you can see that something happened well what happened is and we're going to back it up and just kind of show this to you real quick because it's not terribly important but it shows that this is real hunting so this isn't a situation you can't just walk up to these animals blindly and expect to just walk into range where you can shoot. So we closed a certain amount of distance and we at this point have to wait for it to step out and give us the right shot. But unfortunately it doesn't give us the right shot and it turns and walks the other way and so then we have to get up and start to make a play. Well then of course what happened we missed it on video but it eventually spooked. It saw us move and it ran off. But that's just that's realistic hunting and so when somebody says well why didn't you just keep going towards it? Well the obvious answer is is 
the pig will see you, much like it did when we moved, and it runs away. And that's just how hunting actually works. So here's another perfect example of this. That we found ourselves putting a stock on this pig, and we kind of had to stop in the shadows a little bit and let her uh, cover the rest of the distance. And so, despite holding kind of still, or maybe it's because uh, she saw some of the movement from the camera, maybe she just saw our silhouette, maybe caught a little bit of wind from us, it's hard to say. But this is just hunting in general. Like, this happens. So just kind of go back and watch it, and somebody, you know, might say, well, you should have been wearing camouflage, and you would have probably got the shot. But see, remember, you got to remember that that's not the exact point of this is is we're trying to hunt in clothing that you know has that visual appearance more so of what primitive man hunted in because that's part of the challenge uh, in our personal hunting experience so really this is just an allocation of time we have as many failed stocks as we you know probably actually more so failed stocks and a lot of folks would say well you know if I was hunting with a compound bow I would have already been at full draw and been able to shoot it and that's why I hunt with that and that's kind of exactly the point that I hope to try to make is yes if you were if you were hunting with a more uh, efficient weapon say as a compound or a crossbow or a rifle where you could have simply made that shot but the shot opportunity for a primitive bow is simply not there and I can be very confident in saying that as I've gone through this uh, evolution in primitive hunting where if you take some of these bad shot opportunities when an animal is looking at you uh, you give it the opportunity to move the animal will actually react and your arrow will not go where it is supposed to go and that results more times than not in actually a poor shot. And this next video is a, is a really good representation as to what would happen. So this is actually a little bit further away. This pig is about 18 or so yards. We're going to back this up and we're going to see what happened because the shot placement should have been really, really good, but something happens here. And I want to back this up and I want to show you what happened. And if we slow this down, I want you to see that the pig actually reacts before the arrow ever gets there. And this is why it's really important to take close range shots in primitive hunting. It's not so much about your ability to shoot accurately far. We have to always remember that animals oftentimes, not always, but many times react to the shot before the arrow will ever get there they're already moving and that's exactly what happened in this situation as we slow it down the pig reacts starts to turn and the arrow actually glances off the animal's scapula and it suffered nothing but a essentially a slight scrape flesh wound as the arrow glanced and was sent harmlessly up into the trees and that's why it's very very important to know your effective range, not your shootable effective range, not your accuracy range, but the effective range in which you can deliver an arrow before that animal reacts to either the sound or motion of the shot and can react, causing the arrow to strike where you do not want it to strike. And so that is truly the importance of making sure that you take very close shots, especially with primitive weapons, it's not that they're less effective, less deadly, but rather that we can ensure very, very precise shot placement. And the more you hunt and the more of these opportunities that you take and you notice that you've lost an animal because of that, luckily this was kind of a no harm, no foul, the animal didn't run away with an arrow in it, but it's a constant reminder. Close the distance because the variable of animals moving is much greater than many people give credit for. So this next scenario is is a perfect example again of what we just watched. But you'll notice that I show a lot of restraint in not taking the shot. Now we're deer hunting and there's a, a pretty nice buck that walks out and you notice I don't even pick up the bow to get ready. I already have watched him cover this distance and turn and he's kind of on to us at this point and there's a lot of people that would be raising up trying to shoot and you might get that shot off but even if you send the arrow on its way there's a very good chance that that arrow is not going to strike 
where you want it to even at that distance that distance was all about 25 or so yards but with that deer looking at you there was not a chance that that arrow would get where it was supposed to accurately to make a kill now interesting enough if you keep watching that wasn't the only deer we had we'd seen these across we were actually on the other side of that lake bed when we could see these deer and we walked through the wood line and got into a position and this is the closest we could get to still have some degree of cover but you can really see that we're kind of out in the middle of the open we're just kind of gently hiding behind this uh, patch of palmettos and that buck really kind of picked us out because uh, he was a little bit bigger but there's another uh, couple young bucks and some does that are over there as well and, and you're going to notice they're going to walk out here in just a second and uh, I almost get an opportunity and you can see you can see I wanted to pull the string back really hard but uh, self-restraint from knowing that this situation really isn't going to work out it's, it's going to be a wasted arrow and quite honestly it's a very high chance of wounding this deer and not recovering it and what I'm looking for in primitive hunting even though I'm accepting this challenge I've heard people say things like shoot maybe no shoot no maybe and that is exactly what leads to loss of equipment and loss of opportunity to recover an animal so this is that situation I was talking about you know exactly where I, I'm wanting to shoot this deer is quite literally looking right at us if I try to pull this back he's gone you could see exactly how this was going to play out but we showed restraint and we didn't shoot because you have to remember it's very important to know when to draw and when to be willing to let that animal go and your success ratio will go way higher if you learn and be willing to let animals leave and I'm actually sitting here waiting because there's another one that's going to come through but it's going to be the same situation it's going to come through it's going to be a little bit too far but we keep trying because you never know what's actually going to work out and what's not so this is one of those situations I want to ask I want you to ask yourself would you have shot or would you have attempted to shoot at one of these animals sitting here or standing out in this in this uh, dry lake bed would you have pulled the string on it and tried to send an arrow and if you would have how many times have you been in that situation and seen the end result because I've seen the end result a lot and that's a reflection of my decision not to shoot now I think we've illustrated enough that there's going to be a lot of failed stocks in primitive hunting and that's in hunting in general and the importance again of learning when to take a shot and when to not force a shot is something that really is only going to come with practice and experience but when you hunt enough you put enough time into the stock and you accept the fact that some will work and some will not you will eventually enter into situations where the things actually come together and you can deliver a very very well placed arrow and that's what we're gonna watch in this scenario and we're gonna leave it in real time because I want you to understand the amount of time that we will spend sometimes stalking so in all every stock is different some of them uh, go relatively fast in others we might have a half an hour or more invested into the stock of a particular animal but what you will notice in this video is that I only move there's kind of a light rain going on at the same time it's not raining terribly hard but slightly and that's helping mask a little bit of our noise and uh, another thing that really helps too is having a good pair of moccasins on this ground that we're walking on it's it's actually quite quiet as you can see it's mostly dirt but there are situations in which we are stalking through uh, leaves and sticks and having a good set of moccasins uh, and I like to use uh, moccasins Canada I've worked with them for quite a while you can check for a link down in the description they're a, a great moccasin that I almost exclusively use for stalking around but you can see you just caught a glimpse that that pig is up ahead and I'm just waiting until its head is obstructed before I move because what you can't see 
is because it's obstructed by the, the palm fronds, but that pig would be able to look underneath those palm fronds and see our legs moving. And so what I am doing is waiting until it's either facing the other way or its head is behind a tree or a palm frond or something low in which I can move. So that's exactly what I'm doing. That's why I'm not walking right now because you can see its head. So if I move, it's going to see me. So we're just going to show patience and work in slowly, slowly, slowly. Actually, we're already into range. And then this is the opportunity I was waiting for. Now we're going to go back and back that up here just a second before we show the shot because you'll notice what I did is before I even picked up the bow, I waited until its head was obstructed so it didn't see me pick up the bow and draw the string back. And that is going to significantly decrease the chance of that animal reacting to the shot. And we're going to watch and see how that plays out. So in this situation, you don't actually get to see the pig fall down, but you can tell it was a, it was a good vital hit. It was angling forward through the lungs, and at this point, I just kind of walk up to, to kind of look just a little bit. There's really not a lot of blood trailing necessarily necessary when you make a shot that's that good. You just kind of walk ahead and it's pretty much guaranteed to be laying there within you know, 30, 40, sometimes 50 yards as it just puts them down that fast. Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive. And I'm down hunting with my good buddy Vastin Hall who was gracious enough to invite me down to his uh, cattle ranch down here to hunt. And what a great day of hunting. We got on and shot a little boar this morning. We didn't get it on video, but got some good pictures. Made a great shot on it, about an 18 yard shot, double lung. And just got in this evening. It's raining out now if you can't see. It's not pouring, but it's raining. And uh, put a nice stock on this sow. And I got about a 12 or, I don't know, 12 to 15 yards, somewhere in there. Really nice shot on her as well. Another good pass through. And uh, Stone Points did exactly what they were supposed to do. She only went about, man, maybe 50 yards or so. And shooting this 53-pound uh, Osage. Uh, this is my Aboriginal model that's on my website, huntprimitive.com. And uh, here's one of my custom bobcat quivers. Been wearing this around. And, of course, then these cane arrows and scary sharp stone points and really it's just a, a deadly combination but spot and stock hunting whether it's for deer or pigs is just the best way that you can do it it's so much fun and uh, thanks again Vastin for inviting me down all right so one of the biggest questions right off the bat is why would you hunt primitive and that is a really basic and complex answer all at the same exact time Hunting primitive is a way to introduce more challenge and also a more rewarding experience once you have found success. Now, it's very important that we remember that not everybody is in the same exact place in their hunting journey. And some people just starting out, they're looking for some of the easier methods of hunting. And many people will comment and say, well, I would rather just shoot. Uh, this is, you know, this is silly. You, you, this isn't how you efficiently kill animals. I'm going to take my scope 270 rifle out and shoot a deer at 300 yards. And there's nothing wrong with that. But as you progress through many people's hunting journey, just like mine, I grew up shooting rifles and hunting with rifles and even a compound bow in my youth. And after a certain amount of time, some people, much like myself and many other primitive hunters, start seeking that extra challenge in the hunt. And it's not so much about just the procurement of food and resources, but it's also the enjoyment of the hunt and the reward that we get in after putting in a phenomenal amount of work. So, just because I hunt primitive, 
doesn't mean that you have to to be able to enjoy this video. I think sometimes there's tips that you're going to be able to pick up from somebody like me that works really hard to get super close and take a really super efficient shot and you can implement that into your modern hunting techniques to just simply make you a better hunter. Now another question folks have is is primitive hunting cruel? Is it inefficient? Because I get a fair amount of comments where people say, well, you just shot an animal with an arrow and a stone point and it must have ran around in the woods for hours in excruciating pain before it died. And if you watch this video, you are going to learn very, very fast that somebody like myself that is a very seasoned primitive hunter, we work very hard to get very close to the animals to deliver a very perfect shot into the heart and or the lungs and you will see several times on this that these animals go down extremely fast within seconds. It is a very efficient way of hunting and personally if you start balancing ethics and efficiency they obviously have a, a paradigm in which they do intersect. I am an efficiency hunter. I am looking for the most efficient means possible to hunt with primitive weapons and as a byproduct, we produce a very ethical hunt that puts animals down very, very fast. And we're gonna walk through some of these. As we go through a lot of these hunts, I'm going to back the camera up and go through each individual situation and answer many questions that you may have at home about that particular situation. This should be a very educational film. So let's move forward into some more of these hunts. I really wanted to show you this next scenario because sometimes just super unique stuff happens. So we're walking along, it's really foggy this morning, as you can tell, and there's a, I mean, that's a pretty nice boar. And so we're just being patient, waiting, and all of a sudden this deer comes up and runs this big mature bore off. And I mean, just sometimes just weird stuff happens when you're in the woods. We're actually pretty glad that we got this on camera. So there's not a whole lot to learn here other than that uh, sometimes things that you never imagined could possibly happen, happen to spoil a stock. But you do everything you can, you're just, you're hanging back. And that's kind of a thing here actually to notice is that deer sees us and it's checking us out. So it's actually deer season at this point. I could shoot this deer if it comes in, but it's already on to us where it could pick us out because that's the nature of a deer's awareness versus that pig that had no idea that we were there at that distance. We were just waiting for him to get into cover before we could make a move on him. So this is actually here in the same morning. As we moved on down, we found a little group of pigs that were feeding out in this tall grass. So we kind of covered some distance pretty quick behind this little group of palm trees and then we realized that there was actually a lot more pigs in front of us. So we kind of kind of caught ourselves luckily before stepping out and getting busted. We only thought there was one or two or three but it turns out there was actually quite a few and actually they, they started fighting there a little bit uh, you could see. But we're just at this point being patient because we know if we just walk out there they're going to bust and run off and so at this point we're just showing patience we can kind of get away with some a little bit of head movement where we're looking around and what I'm really doing is I'm waiting either for them to close the distance to come to me or what's happening right now is I've waited until all their heads are down and rooting like none of the pigs are actually paying attention to what's going on so I start slipping in a little bit closer and this is again one of those situations that you can't be afraid to mess up a stock. You have to close the distance to get close enough. In some situations when you know they're working towards you it's better to be patient and let them close the distance but these pigs are, are pretty much moving off to the left to go into the palmettos. Just they're not on a mission they're just feeding their way that way we're not where we need to be for them to come straight to us so I'm just trying to stay down and for the most part you have to remember too that there's several pigs walking around so they're kinda of used to seeing a little bit of movement so you, you can kinda of get away with some because they probably think I'm another pig that's kinda of why I'm kinda of hunched over a little bit as well keeping my profile low trying to keep like I'm not making threatening movements and at this point in time none of them really see me they don't notice me but as we 
get a little bit closer into this, you're going to notice that they start coming right towards me, and one of them does see me, and, and it turns into where we got lucky and got a shot. But there's a lot of people right now. Right now, these, these pigs are really within about 12 or 15 yards, and you would think that the one kind of in the middle of the screen has given me an opportunity, but see, there's, there's a patch of grass covering up its vitals. So every one of these pigs that I'm looking at, not a single one is giving me a good shot opportunity and this is the difference between experience and knowing where you can actually get an arrow into the vitals or taking a bad shot opportunity that's either through brush or a pig that's facing you a pig that's quartering towards you that's moving too heavily that can see you when you draw and you have to be patient and wait for that absolute perfect opportunity because I know my younger self and many people that I know would have already been shooting at these pigs and you probably would not get one. You'd hit a significant bone and you wouldn't penetrate. Now did you just see that that one noticed me? And now they're on to me so I just kinda hold still but I'm getting ready because I know they're gonna just move on. They're either gonna run or they're gonna turn and give me a shot. So these ones run and this one gives me a perfect shot coincidentally just before all of them spook. And I delivered that arrow perfectly quartered away and right now you can actually see the arrow sticking out the other side. It entered back a little bit and came out in front of its shoulder, complete full penetration. And it was one of those situations that happened so fast. I was prepared to let those pigs completely run away. Notice I never shot when they were facing me. I didn't shoot while they were running away. But as I was following then, hoping that maybe one of them would stop, that one turned broadside, slightly quartering away, just perfect and gave me that perfect shot opportunity An instinct took over I delivered the shot it had no idea it was there even though the other one spooked it had not figured out what was going on yet and we put that arrow exactly where it was supposed to be and brought it down very fast have a look at that so Kind of a deceiving thing about pigs is they look relatively small, but body size that's very similar to say like the size of a doe. So they kind of make a good comparison for a deer, even though they look smaller because their legs aren't as long. But that's a very, very light arrow. It's like 380 grains, really light, shooting a bow that's like I grab my bow here anyway, I'll show you. It's uh well, kind of the what I'll be calling the high plains model but it's also very akin to the horseman so the horseman model is the short version but since I shoot such a short draw length anyway uh, essentially mine is a horseman and a high plains but a high plains is just a longer horseman so I pulled this clip from one of my previous hunting videos and you may have seen this one or another one that's very similar to it. I have two videos and I'll put a link to it down in the description to them in which I climb up into these live oak trees and await for a deer to come by. Now hunting from an elevated position such as a tree or if you're a modern hunter hunting in a modern tree stand will afford you a much better opportunity at getting close to deer but rather instead of us going towards the deer we're sitting and waiting for the deer to come to us. It is a much slower not as an exciting way to hunt in my opinion but it can also be very efficient and what's really important about this is it gets you that very close shot on an animal that is unaware of your presence and as you watch this hunt unfold you'll notice that this deer is uh, it's probably about nine yards or so when I actually shoot it and we are able to drop an arrow perfectly into its heart and while I have shot deer at ranges up to six yards on the ground, doing such on camera is an entirely different story. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Now, if you watch this deer run, and then I zoom in on it here, you can actually watch the deer fall. So that was something I was able to do and catch on camera, is I put that uh, arrow right through its heart, and it came out the other side, down below, underneath right. its oh, other goodness. armpit. And it ran all about 50 or so yards, and we watched it fall. And 
really there's no blood trail necessary. Uh, I watched her go down and I think you could too. I think you could see her. And we got some good light yet. And uh, But let's head on over see if we can you know, find a little blood on the way. May find the arrow if it's uh, if she lost it on the way, but I mean I can shoot. I can see her laying up there already. So we're in good shape. When you hit these deer good, they leave a heck of a blood trail even with a stone point. They really do. A properly sharpened stone point is as deadly as anything if you put it in the right spot. Uh, they, they really leave a trail to follow. Of course, we don't need to follow a trail on this one, but, I mean, it sure does the job, that's for sure. And she was laying there. I mean, she did not make it, I bet, 50, 60 yards from the tree. Oh, that great blood, if you can see that. Another ambush situation would be setting up on the ground, much like a scene here in my elk hunting video that was on public land in Idaho. And as it grew close to dark, we knew that there was an elk in the area, and we were on a pretty nice trail, and the cameraman set up behind me oh, about 30 or so yards, and I found a position kind of by a bunch of short little pine trees. And it was very important to keep the wind in my favor with the wind coming from the elk to me or to crosswind because if the wind is blowing from you to the elk or deer or pig or any animal for that matter a shot like this would have never happened so playing the wind is something we need to always remember is probably our first priority so when somebody asks me what the most important things to think about are when it comes to primitive hunting, or really hunting in general, it's to hunt with the wind in your favor first and foremost. No amount of scent elimination products or gimmicks will ever keep your scent from reaching an animal's nose as good as playing the wind will. So always keep the wind either at a crosswind or coming from the animal to you. And then next, of course, is to try to keep your visual distractions down to a minimum, which is mostly just movement. Remember, most animals are colorblind. They can see certain hues per se, but as you can see from what I wear during my hunts, modern camouflage is, is not a necessity at all whatsoever. It may help you in some instances, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty small potatoes. You can walk around in some brown pants and a and a brown dyed shirt that's got paintings on it and shoot animals pretty readily so uh, camouflage not super important in my opinion and then it's mostly after that it comes down to an allocation of time it's it's spend time in the woods not just trying to force shots but to actually learn what the animals do how they behave what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, and that is nothing more than, as I stated previously, an allocation of time. The more time you spend in the woods, the more time you spend hunting, the more you will learn to become a very proficient, primitive, or even modern hunter. So, put the time in the woods, enjoy the experience, don't necessarily be in a rush to shoot everything you see, slow down, be patient, take it all in, and I think you'll do very well. Hey guys, thanks for following along today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I was able to teach you a little bit of what I do when I'm primitive hunting and hopefully it helps you in your very own adventures. And of course, remember that all of this is sponsored by my business, Hunt Primitive, which you can find at huntprimitive.com. Link is down in the description, which is also uh, goes to gillsprimitivearchery.com, sister companies working together. So please check it out if you're looking for bows, arrows, at, ladder, stone points, quivers, Anything you could possibly need for primitive hunting you will find at huntprimitive.com and we will see you on the next adventure.